This is Charles Habsburg. When we take a look at Charles's portraits, we can see that he was a case study for inbreeding chronic in the Habsburg royal family. So chances are you've clicked on this video because you want to know just how inbred Charles was. Here's your answer. Very. Okay, okay. Chances are you want a bit more information than just that. So in today's video, we're going to be breaking down just how inbred Charles II of Spain truly was. Before we get right into Charles II of Spain, the topic of this video, we need to look at his family heritage, and more importantly, the intermarriages that happened between its family members. It is no secret that the Habsburg continually intermarried each other, but why? To most people of the modern period, intermarriage is seen with scorn. It doesn't make much sense when we know that it causes genetic abnormalities. However, the Habsburgs didn't know this, and conversely, they believed that intermarrying members of their own family would strengthen the bloodline in two separate ways. Firstly, and some of you have probably heard this before, but there was a theory of blue blood, in which royal family members, especially in early modern Europe, only wanted to marry people of the same class, namely the royalty. Aristocracy too was seen as a bit suspicious and not high enough. But the main reason why this was so harmful was because of the Habsburg dynasty itself. In 1558, Charles V of the Holy Roman Empire died, splitting his empire into two parts. His son, Philip, inherited Spain. Meanwhile, his brother and nephew inherited Austria. It's because of this dynastic fracture that we start running into the second issue as to why the Habsburgs intermarried. Dynastic insurance. In early modern Europe, the survival rate for infant children was dire. The Habsburgs were no exception. Despite the dynastic fracture, both kingdoms wanted to maintain positive relations with one another, and more importantly, they were worried that a sudden death would fracture their entire kingdom. Intermarriage was not seen with scorn, it was rather seen as an insurance policy and a safety net. If the eldest son died and there were no other sons, the kingdom would have to pass to the eldest daughter due to the succession laws not prohibiting female succession. But in order to ensure that it would still be a Habsburg succession, it was important for the eldest daughter to be married to a Habsburg, so her issue and the future successors to the kingdom would be Habsburg. When we look at Spain and its consorts of a microscope, we can identify that many consorts were indeed Habsburg. Philip II's fourth wife was his niece, a Habsburg. Philip III's wife was his second cousin and also a Habsburg. Philip IV's first wife was not a Habsburg, but she was a first cousin and Philip IV's second wife was a Habsburg and his niece. The last couple are a helpful case study for us to identify this theory of intermarriage. Mariana of Austria was the only daughter of an Austrian emperor. She had two brothers, an elder and a younger. Mariana was expected to marry her cousin, but unfortunately he passed away. Similarly, Philip IV's first wife passed away due to birth complications meaning that both individuals were now unmarried or no longer betrothed. When Mariana's eldest brother passed away, it became more apparent that she needed to marry a Habsburg in order to maintain an Austrian Habsburg succession in case her younger brother would die without issue. The solution was for Mariana to marry her uncle, Philip IV of Spain. Together, they produced a daughter who isn't the subject of this video, but they also produced a son, Charles Habsburg, who is. So, just how inbred was Charles Habsburg? Luckily, we do have a scientific theory that we can use to determine this exactly. This is known as the consanguinity coefficient, a measure of how closely two individuals are related to one another, and therefore how inbred their issue, children, will be. The measure is a measure between naught and one. If you are towards one, you are more inbred, and if you are towards zero, you are less inbred. Because of Charles's insane inbreeding due to the Habsburg intermarriage, his great-great-grandparents, Isabella and Ferdinand, the first Catholic monarchs of Spain, were not only his great-great-grandparents, they were also his great-great-great-grandparents and his great-great-uncle and aunt. A lot of greats, a lot of, a lot of ties in this family, a bit too much of a mess in my head. 
we're not going to cover it in today's video. All you need to know is that he was related to multiple members of his own family simultaneously because of the inbreeding. Even when we completely ignore all other members of the family, we have to remember that his parents were uncle and niece. And this alone is enough to cause a massive genetic issue. But in order to determine Charles's inbreeding, we do have to take into account all members of his ancestry, or at least the only ones recorded. When we do this, we determine that Charles has had the highest consanguinity coefficient in the entire Habsburg dynasty, at a total of 0.254. So what exactly does this mean? Well, I'm gonna say it now. If you were to have a child with your full sibling, the child you will have together will have an inbred coefficient of 0.25. So Charles Habsburg was more inbred than a child of its full siblings. Disgusting! Because of Charles's insane coefficient of inbreeding, he was not expected to last long. In this period, individuals who had an inbred coefficient of above 0.125 were only expected to have a life expectancy of eight years old. However, Charles survived much longer than this, dying at the age of 39 in 1700. Investigating Charles Habsburg's inbreeding is more of an interesting story than just a mere jibe. In future videos, I will be covering more members of the Habsburg dynasty who were almost as equally inbred, but because of their survival and also their issue, they completely baffle historians and geneticists. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.